Hello everyone. In this video, we'll explore the Power BI app and explore the data set aspect. So this data set would be available in the description and you can avail the data set from there. Okay, so you would be prompt whenever you just click on the Power BI, this particular prompt would be visible to you and it would suggest to get the data to the visualize or for visualization purpose. I'll just click on the get data option and as my data set is Excel format, so I would click here the Excel workbook. So different formats options are available I can connect with and get the data through these particular formats. As my data is Excel, I'll just connect on Excel workbook and wherever the data set is located, I'll just click on that particular file and folder and just open on it. So this would take a few seconds to connect with the data set and load each and every row in my public, like uh, this particular service. Okay. So in my data set, I have different sheets into it. The, this particular, in this particular software, there is a navigator which would prompt and this would show us different sheets available in the particular file or the superstore data set. So I have orders, I have peoples and I have written this superstore data set. Okay, this is a data set which contains numerical like columns as well as categorical cal uh, columns. We have alphanumerical columns as well. So different types of columns is there and which contains different data into it. So uh, it belongs to superstore data where it is an online store through which uh, the different customers are buying the products. So uh, this is a, a USA country which is having or this particular superstore is stored in the USA. And the people, here we have another sheet that is persons and regions. So uh, this different persons are responsible for this different region. We have West, East, Central, South region. And these are the people who are responsible for the sale in that region or any of the management in that region. Okay. And we have a returns sheet as well, which contains how many orders or which kind of order or any kind of order which has been returned from the customer. And its status is here that it is being recorded whether it is returned or not. Yes, it is returned and which order it is. So uh, as of now, we can see here that we required require a little bit transformation here because uh, we have uh, returns and order ID as a row, not as a column name. Here as well, the peoples as well, it has taken column one and column two as a column name, but it should take person and a region as a uh, its column name. So we'll just click on orders, we'll click on peoples, and we will click on returns. And we'll just transform the data. We'll not load directly. Well, if the data is properly cleaned, like if I just clicked on the orders and just click on load. It is a kind of data which is properly organized. We can see here each and every thing is properly organized. We can see row ID which contains one, two, number of rows it contains. And we have another column that is order ID which is also as a column name but it is not a row. So it has taken a properly, like it has detected its column name, but in the case of people and returns, it has not taken. So for that case, we would transform it. And let's explore a little bit into this, what all things we have. 
in the orders table as well. So another thing we have a column that is order date. So whenever the order is being placed, the date is being uh, captured by the uh, software and it has been placed that 8-11-2017 it was being ordered and when it is shipped after 8-9-10-11 after 4 days it has been shipped. So uh, what is the shipping mode which is being preferred by the customer? It is a second class whether it is standard or whether it is first class delivery. What kind of delivery the person has preferred? So moreover we can see there is a standard class uh, or second class here. In the first uh, 20 rows we can see. So another column we would have here that is customer ID. Customer ID is being generated for each and every person unique ID is given. So here we can uh, see that it is clear GUT which is given a ID CG 12520 and each and every person is having a unique ID whether he is ordering twice or thrice his ID would be same okay and uh, that particular customer belong to which segment segment here in the sense whether it is a consumer the product is directly consumed by a uh, customer or it has been capitalized, whether it has been as uh, used as of office, home office, or whether it is used for a corporate purpose. It is uh, that means it is the product at the last stage, or it has been capitalized for making money. Okay. For uh, next thing we can see here that United States. So it is the country, uh, United States, where the superstore is uh, selling its items and all, all over the states we can see. That means we total have 50 states in the United States. And this particular country have different cities and different states. And also we have the postal codes for each and every city where the parcel needs to be delivered okay and these particular states are then divided into south west east north and central so uh, these states the 50 states are being divided into the four to five sections where the people can handle it properly next comes into account that is product ID. So each and every product is given a, a unique product ID to be recognized and we can easily find out. So uh, what kind of product is there? It is uh, a furniture. So the product ID is taken as FUR furniture. It belongs to furniture and subcategory we have a bookcases. So uh, first letter of uh, three uh, first letter of subcategories, two first letters and three first letters of uh, category is taken for the reference of uh, what is actually a subcategory and what is actually a category. And then comes the products name. It is a bookcases names a Bush Somerset collection bookcases. So the product name is bookcases and its certain name is given to it. This particular uh, acronym is being created for generating a unique product ID for each and every product. So uh, that means software is being generating or maybe manually it may have been generated or created. And we can see here each and every products whenever it is by uh, the entry is being generated. And then there comes a sale. So uh, there is a sale of 261.96 rupees and quantity that are buyed by the person that is uh, clear, cute, that is, uh, we can see it is two quantities are buyed and there is no discount given and we can see the profit is 41 rupees 91, 36 rupees. Uh, maybe in dollars we can say uh, there may be uh, dollars and these are being generated for each and every 
customer whenever he is buying or she is buying certain things the entry is being generated and uh, moreover we have discussed regarding the peoples these are the peoples which are handling the regions and the returns as well so uh, we have got proper idea of the data set what is actually it has been uh, containing or what the items it has and let's transform both the things like uh, the returns and the peoples let's transform the data i'll click on transform and it would be redirected from this canvas to the power query editor so this we would discuss in more detail in further sessions or right now we would just uh, include this first row as a header so that means this particular returns should be as a column name so let's transform it and we have a use first row as a header as an option here we can utilize this option for the row as a header so let's click on it and i'll just click on use first row as a header option so this returns is now moved to the column names same with the people i would do i'll just click on use first row as a header okay so now it is properly been recognized that this column belongs to persons and this column belong to the regions so now we'll just uh, go to the file and click on close and apply so the changes we have made it would be applied and the power query editor would be closed so uh, we would be redirected to the canvas again after transforming the data whatever we want to transform and then it can be again uh, reloaded to the canvas so it would take a little bit time to transform again and till then we'll discuss about the visualization so we have a visualization pane at the right side of my screen and the data pane in the right side to the visualization side by of the visualization so the all the data which it would contain would be here orders people returns so all the column these are the sheets into my file and this contains the order table and this contains people's table and this contains returns table so whatever i would be using or certain columns i would be using for the visualizations would come from here from the data and in the visualization here we have the different charts of visualization we have nearly about 32 plus charts here and where we can create a stack bar we have a stack column chart we have cluster bar chart different different charts are there we have pie chart we have donut chart we have tree map we have cluster uh, scattered chart so we have funnel chart so as per our need we can create the charts as we want so uh, by clicking of clicking on any of this particular symbol we would be able to access different charts so we need to click on the symbols and place the values here in the this sections so we as the chart changes the sections also increase as per the chart is as per uh, the chart belongs to so uh, moving to the formatting option this is a visualization option and this is a formatting option if we want to change any of the format like uh, to change the background color or to add a image or to change the canvas setting if we want to increase the size of the canvas if we want to increase the text of the any of x or y axis anything any formatting changes would be applicable or it can be accessed through the format your options for format your report or format your visual options so whenever we want to edit something we have to click on that chart and we would be 
clicking on this option to format its uh, visual appearance. So uh, coming to the next part, we have a filter option over here. So filter is something like when we stain something, like we prepare a tea and stain its tea powder and the liquid is being drinked by us. So likewise, uh, we also filter the data as like uh, we don't take all the records but sometimes we need to filter out the data like uh, we need only top five records or we need sometimes bottom uh, from the top bottom we need five records or certain uh, filtering we should be applying on the data to access to extract the information so kind of thing we would be filtering out so you can see the symbol as well here that is a fernal so uh, fernal is used to filter the data we can say it is a type of type of stain been used so we'll see in detail in the further sessions how to use this filters so uh, next comes here we would explore all the things like we have a file as we have already seen this is used to save the uh, file of power bi that is extension that is pbix whenever you create any of the uh, any of the uh, visualization you would be uh, saving as P I pbix and uh, we have option as a save we have option as a save as whenever you want to save it in a new file as a new file or whenever you want to share it or get the data another data source or if you want to import certain things or export your uh, export your particular power bi dashboard or uh, charts you can save it or export it as a template as itself a power bi uh, pbix file or export it as a pdf as well so you can access it properly so another options we have a multiple settings option we have uh, options and setting you can just click on options and there would be certain uh, available options through which i would be customizing each and everything so uh, as of now we'll just uh, click the options like uh, upgrading options wherever uh, there has been uh, changes made like uh, whenever the power bi service is making certain changes we need to upgrade it so in a, in a month there may be a certain one or two changes made into the power bi application there needs to be installed it uh, installed it manually and we need to properly install it and avail that particular options as of now we would not install we will just explore the data uh, all the uh, options available into uh, the power bi and for the updation uh, as of now you have already installed it a uh, new power bi or uh, then the version which you have been using is updated version and we would not need to install or any upgrade upgradation would not be required for us so let's click on okay and go to the home option so in the home you can see here there is another option for the get data so uh, initially we get the get uh, the prompt which also showed the get data option here also we have option that is showing the get data and if we just click on get data we would be available uh, the options would be available uh, that is uh, what kind of format uh, the data is and you would be using that particular format or a pipeline to uh, connect with the data if it is a text csv we would be clicking on this if it is an excel workbook we would click on this particular option and to avail multiple options again uh, like don't think if the prompt is gone you would not be able to access that particular data you can click on more and again the prompt you would that that would be appeared in the front of us so let's click on cancel 
and we have different data sources through which we can connect that is one lake data hub excel it is a shortcut for this particular data sources if we want to enter the data manually we can enter it as well we have a sql server we can connect with that we have a data verse we and uh, the whenever you just use any of the data source and that history gets recorded into this and you would be able to retrieve that as well okay so what queries you can do the queries like editing formatting you can just click on transform again if you want to uh, make certain changes again like uh, formatting changes or if you want to clean the data again you can click on transform data and if here there is an option of refresh if certain things gets added into the sheet in whether that sheet is in the desktop or whether that sheet is on the online or any of the platform it is so you have to just refresh it uh, whenever something gets added into that sheet you have to click on refresh so all the uh, the uh, the new data or the updated data again it gets refreshed and added into this particular uh, canvas or this particular uh, file pbix file so next comes insert so insert is the option it is a shortcut option you can click on any of the visuals manually if you want and the option another is like you can click on new visual and avail the visualization it is better to click on here that rather than going here to click on the new visual so next option we have is a text box whenever uh, you want to add certain text or any dashboard name or any of the uh, sheets uh, header you want title you want so uh, you can access it with the text box you can click on the text box so uh, that option would be available to you to add certain highlight to your uh, graph so i'll just increase the size 28 i will keep so this Again, I have to highlight it. This is Power BI. So uh, we can uh, manually write the text and easily access it with the help of text box. So I'll just resize it properly. Whatever editing options you want to do with the text, as of like you can see we have a bold option we have italic underline alignment options we have and if i want to change any of the font calibri if i keep so that option would also be available and here we have another option that is more visuals if uh, certain thing certain uh, charts if it has been purchased or we have a license of it or certain uh, organization have uh, created it and you have access to it you can uh, easily download that file and access with the help of this particular option okay and here comes another option that is calculation part so in the calculation we have a calculator so calculations is related to the calculator and this calculations can be formed or can be framed with the help of functions such, such as we can see by the summation or we can have an average we can have a product we can have certain things percentage and all so these things can be available or we can create a manual measure like assigning a certain value to it so uh, this particular uh, measure or this particular option is very much helpful in creating uh, the manual fields which are related to the calculations so whenever uh, we create this it would appear into the data as a field or a column into it if i just place measure as a one it would uh, the measure uh, column would be created having a one value so this option is available for using a calculations or creating a uh, filter out of certain things so uh, we have another option here for the calculations and this is a flash sign that means it is uh, ai generated 
measures we can create. Uh, there is an AI which can create the measures for us. So if I just click on uh, this particular options, the quick measures have been created. A flash measures can be created, lightning flash. So uh, we have, uh, it has uh, gone through the data sets and uh, saw what kind of columns it has. Like we have average per category, va variance per category. So aggregate per category, something is there. And what are the filters? Filters are being used as a value difference from filter value, percentage difference from filter value, sales from the new customer, and time intelligence also it is providing us that is year to date total, quarter to date total, month to date total, year over year changes. What is the year over year changes of a certain thing like sales, profit? We can calculate those things also. And we have certain and other things like running total, total for the category. We have mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, percentage, difference, correlation, coefficient. And for this text, we have star rating and concatenated list of values. So these things we have for uh, measures. If we are unable to frame the filter or unable to write any of the formula, we can take the help of these things, which is the AI generated. And this would help in a better way if we are not able to organize it properly. So we have another option that is suggestion with a co-pilot mode we have. So these things needs to be uh, uh, signed in. So we need to sign in for this for the uh, suggestions with the co-pilot mode so uh, where we have to uh, write the questions and this would frame the a uh, proper filter or proper answer for the uh, um, calculations so i'll just as of now i would exit this mode and exit the measure as well okay so another options we have an insertion option and uh, it contains a new page and there also we have certain options like uh, the options which are there here these are the options also available into the insert so we have a question answer we also have here so uh, these are the shortcuts and in the insertion also we can be uh, see or we can avail these options as well so again, the same repetitions has been done like AI visuals. These are AI visuals like uh, uh, if we want to frame certain things like uh, if we are not able to understand what kind of visuals it contains or what kind of visual would be suitable for this particular data. So we have AI into Power BI that would frame us the visual properly. So we just need to uh, put the proper prompt and the uh, visual would be visible visible to us and this would uh, this option would be available in q and a Ta that is the one so the options it would frame us at the initial level that it would frame certain questions to us so if i just click on show all options so this would frame a questions for us and if I click on any of the measure or a question this would frame me the visual so I'll just click on framing and this would be available first class same class and so as it is AI it is learning mode it would sometimes not properly measure what actually we want so we have to uh, write it properly the prompt and then it would be able to give the answers properly so as of now i would remove it and we'll focus on another ai visual that is key influencers the most important part is kpi to find out what is a kpi and uh, that is key performance indicator so we target it with the sales we are targeted with the profit so these key influencers like these are the key to influence the profit or sales we have to find out so we have ai visuals in the power bi that is decomposition tree key influencers question and answer and smart narrative so this would uh, narrate what all things would be there into the graph 
what all things the graph specifies we can narrate the story and we have a platforms a power platforms we have peg paginated report or power applications power automated uh, preview we these are the platforms through which we can connect with and again we have certain elements which uh, are extra they are buttons and shapes and the images so with the help of these things we can insert the buttons if you want to go to the right or left there are certain buttons we can uh, generate or we can drive into or uh, we can access into this particular canvas that is left arrow right arrow reset button so this would reset it to the uh, initial part or we can just move it to back or front so uh, they although we have multiple options repeated so we uh, can see the one which is easily available we can access through that so uh, we have another option that is insertion of image so if uh, the image in, is in the desktop we can uh, extract the image or in, uh, import the image into the power bi application through this particular option so uh, we have modelings as well and views as well as well as we have optimize option and we have a help option so these all things optimizing views option this we would study in further sessions as as uh, we can see the similarly uh, these things are repeated into the modeling and views option so uh, we would study whenever we require it thank you for watching